Well, about two years ago, I was sitting on the porch of my old house, drinking Fremont Summer Ale, holding my camera like this. I believe I called that beer something like, if a grown-up made really good lemonade. Fremont Summer Ale is pretty easy to find just about every summer, and I have found it just about every summer since, and I've enjoyed it. But I thought it would be a good time to do just a follow-up and see how much my tastes have changed. I doubt I could taste whether the beer itself has changed, but whether it's still as much of a good thing for me as it was two years ago. That's a pretty good head on that thing. The color is still definitely very lemonade-y. Yellow, maybe a hint of red. <clears throat> Not quite clear, a little bit hazy. The uh, head is voluptuous and a bit creamy. It's also very bright out here. I'm in direct sunlight, hence the hat and the shadow over my eyes and other things from relatively poor <laughs> camera positioning. I'm just trying different things out. It's not terribly hot today. It's supposed to hit 80, I believe, today. Um, to the nose, there's still that combination of lemon peel and almost a lemon syrup. Like they took lemon and they concentrated it and perhaps added a bit of sugar to it. I don't know how much lemon they actually employ in this brew. I don't know that they necessarily do use lemon. It doesn't state on the can anywhere whether they do. But it is such a, such a prominent part of the smell of the beer. I would not be surprised if they use some sort of lemon or lemon peel in the making of it. I believe I've mentioned this recently. There's a, if you go to some fancy restaurant, sometimes you'll see at the bar a, um, a, a jar or a container with really like dried citrus rounds that they'll use as garnishes or as they construct drinks. Um, I believe they'll mix them with, or they'll put them in vinegar as part of a, a thrush, like a vinegar and um, sparkling water as a, as a, like a really delicious kind of acidic soda. Um, not sure all the other uses for it, but they have a real intense and dried and slightly concentrated and sweet uh, essence of their, of the fruit. And that's what this reminds me of. It's not like dried out, it's, it's concentrated, it's, it's, it's intense, but you know, aired out because it's an aroma, not a taste. And this is a beer, not a syrup. It smells good. It smells very comparable to what I remember it smelling like and what I enjoyed about it quite a lot. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. The hop character to this, so this is a pale ale, not an India pale ale, so I'm expecting a moderate hop character. The hop character is very present, and it reads kind of like a, a light IPA, light West Coast IPA with that kind of dry, um, almost piney hop finish, herbal hop finish. There's not really any of the like lemon syrup to the to the taste. There's definitely a lemon peel essence, but it is very, um, very faint. So while the aromas speak of these kind of intense, um, you know, intensified, I'm not gonna say intense, because it's not intense, it's an intensified, concentrated, uh, kind of a lemon essence. The taste is more of a lemon peel, but if you're drinking it with your nose open, you still get some of that the aromas in there too, and that works very nicely. Watching my my uh, meters on my recording software go spiking all over the place because the wind is basically blowing right across the front of the mic. That's probably suboptimal. Not a lot I can do about that. Oh well. It's amazing what the filters will do later though. I just discovered high pass filters, I think it was, and I've started applying that to all my all my content just <laughs> makes it so easy to strip out a lot of the wind noise. I mean, it's not perfect, but hey, considering I'm using a, I don't know, 12 year old microphone and 
no sound block, no wind blocking on at all, on it at all. And I'm recording outside. I think it's working pretty well. If you think I'm doing absolutely terribly, feel free to let me know. I'll get right on replacing my hardware. <laughs> this is a good beer. I like this a lot. It kind of hits that sweet spot of, while I like IPAs, I like IPAs a lot. Um, this being a lighter, uh, less strongly, less strongly hopped uh, beer does have its benefits. You are tasting a bit more of the maltiness. Um, it has just a bit more character than you know, a Pilsner and tons more character than the average light lager. And I think this works really nicely as a lawnmower beer, though I think this beer is absolutely best really cold, like freshly cold. And even just holding it in my hand, it's picking up enough, enough blah, 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 my mouth works today. It's picking up enough warmth that it does lose a bit of that kind of crisply refreshing bite that I, that I do appreciate it about it pretty quickly. Um, so maybe if I were drinking this outdoors, I would put it in a cozy to keep some insulation on it and drink it straight from the can, but then you're going to lose the aromas. So maybe I'd put it in an insulated tumbler or something instead, but I mean, upsides and downsides, it's a good beer. Yeah, good stuff. In fact, while it's still colder, the, the lemon flavor, I think, is more prominent. As it warms up, you, the, the beer kind of separates its flavors a little bit. You get the, the initial kind of juicy, and then you get, the, you get the, the hops coming in, and they kind of finish and fade, but you also kind of get this third note that comes in two-thirds of the way through. That's kind of this uh, cracker maltiness that, as the beer warms up, gets a little bit disjointed compared to, or a little disconnected from the, the main body of the beer. But when it's colder, those are all kind of closer together, tighter in, and you're tasting them all at once, I think. So definitely this is a beer intended to be drunk cold, which is fine. I'll just drink it cold. Yeah. Um, so thinking back, I have not recently rewatched my, um, my previous review of this. I enjoyed this beer a lot. I believe I may have even called it my favorite beer of the summer. Uh, and it has remained really just a standard, really good, I'm going to keep it in my fridge because it's good and also it's available at Costco, so it's relatively inexpensive and easy to find for me. <laughs> um, and yeah, it retains that spot. It's a good summer beer. It's relatively light. It has enough body to keep a hop hound happy. Um, it's got enough maltiness and enough balance that you don't have to be hop mad to enjoy it. And it's got that refreshing lemon citrus uh, character to it that just makes it perfect. Chef's kiss, right? Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking again and enjoying, again, Fremont Brewing's Summer Pale Ale. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.